Here it goes. It took forever. I don't know why it took so long. Good afternoon. Good evening, some places. It's February the... I almost said the 21st. I was. I wrote a check today for the 21st. Did you? Yes. <laughs> you put 21st on it? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't look at my phone like a smart girl would. Oh, my goodness. So I wrote the check for the 21st, but guess what? It's not the 21st. No. I'm jumping the gun. It's not. It is Tuesday, February 20th at 4 o'clock Central Time. What time is it where you are? Beautiful day today. It is. It is a Absolutely beautiful, beautiful day. It's got a touch of summer in it even. It is. It is beautiful. I went outside without a jacket. You know that means that it's got a touch of summer in it. Have you looked at the 10-day forecast? Yes, I have. It's going to rain Thursday, right? Thursday night. What about what's Saturday look like? Well, <clears throat> remember last night you told me it was going to be in the 80s next week? Yeah. And that's when I looked at the weather. So I haven't looked today. It's going to be pretty Saturday. What do you have planned? Sunny. That's the uh, pedals class. Oh, are you going to that? I plan on it. Okay. Um, I was just thinking, though, this would be, I think this would be my either third or fourth year going. Every time I've gone, it has been either. It's always been cold. Very cold. And it's been extremely cloudy. It's never been any sunshine. And twice it's rained. Well, that doesn't appear to be the case for Saturday. No, not at all. Well, that's bad, though. Why? Because when it's that kind of weather, you want to be inside. And when it's this kind oh, yeah, of weather, yeah. you want to be doing <laughs> something productive. You're right. You're right. So it's not good. But um, that's my theory. Yeah. But, but the thing about it is, is they take you around and show you how to prune roses and that kind of thing. Oh, so, so you need to be able to go outside. Yeah, it's like half the class is inside, the other half's outside. So, hmm. anyways, well, good afternoon, everybody. I was trying to see if anybody said what time it was over there, but I don't see anything. Oh, we talked through that. Oh, you want to talk through that? They, uh, they put that already. Okay, 10 p.m. 10 p.m., see, I knew it. There were some places that were way different than what we are. Good morning from Queensland, Australia. See, that's a lot of difference. Yes. Yeah, a lot of difference. We mm -hmm. have we have followers from all different all different areas. So much so that I can't tell you how many emails I got. In the videos now, I put in the time, the temperature, the wind. I want people to know what the wind's doing here. I don't, my, my mic does a really good job at blocking it. You're about to be able to pack that mic up, though, because this time of the year is when it's bad. It was great today. No wind today. I'm talking about during the summertime. Oh, yeah, yeah. That issue. Not that much wind. But um, I always put the temperature on there. And we're from the United States, so everything's Fahrenheit. But I had so many people ask, could I do Celsius? Well, I know you did it because I read some comments. <laughs> <laughs> Not because I watched the videos, but because I read the comments and they were appreciative that you put it in a way that they could understand it where they are. So that's how I knew. Well, I really didn't even think about it, you know, because I figured most everybody that watches this is from the United States. But no, you don't think that. I would say that is a, not the case. A large, I thought it was going to make a rainbow or something. <laughs> A large, widespread audience that we are thankful for. Oh, gosh, I was fixing to say something. Oh, United States, I think, is the only one that does Fahrenheit. Really? I think that's correct. We could ask Mary Carl. She'll know. So Mary Carl would know for sure. That's some of her facts that, yeah, yeah. she would know. Well. Hmm. What you got going on? Anything? I don't feel good. You don't feel good? No. I know y'all don't want to hear that. We're here to cheer you up, not bring you down, but. I didn't know that. It's you just, seem pretty good today. No, I'm not. It's just like that. You hmm. have good days and then you wake yeah, up days. and it's like, hmm. why? I do want to say that Ryan the Roaster wanted me to make an announcement today on the live. And that is, is that 
Uh, well, yesterday was President's Day, so the post office was closed. So wasn't any order shipped out today. And he was working today, packaging his stuff up. And I think he got a few shipped out today, but he wanted me to, apolog to apologize for everyone because something came up and he had to leave the shop and take care of something and that he'd get right back on it. Yeah. So it may be a delay shipping there, but he wanted to make sure that he people knew it. You want me to let everybody know? Well, nobody's going to complain about it because Ryan is so good about getting orders in the mail immediately. He is. That only thing you would comment on is how quick it got there. <laughs> right? That's right. That's right. So if you have ordered coffee yesterday or today, it may be a little delayed by a day getting there. You know what I saw earlier? What? So I went and picked my lawnmower up from the shop. I think I, think I told y'all last yeah. Tuesday yep. is when I took it. Yep. So they called today and said it was ready, and they're only open half a day tomorrow. So it worked out best for me to go on and go get it today. And on the way, Here's at, what I found. that's my watch. I didn't ask her anything. She just thinks I need to know something. Package is out for delivery. On my way to pick up the lawnmower, I looked over at the gas station, and there's a truck, a little little truck, not a big full-size truck, little truck. What kind of truck? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's unnecessary. It's a little truck. A little in, truck. In the bed, yeah. it was filled up with packages. Caught my eye, you know, packages all in the back of the truck. So I look again on the side of it, USPS. Postal service in that little truck. And really? you know what I was thinking? What? I hope none of my packages are in the back of that truck. Because <laughs> they had the cab of the truck was slap full. Mm -hmm. You know, you see like Jeeps or whatever. And right, right. they're always full of stuff. But this was a little pickup truck. And the bed was just full. I wonder what he does on rainy days. So it was a rural route? Yeah, route? rural carrier in a little I teeny tiny, know. like a little Toyota. Or I don't know what he does on rainy days. Truck, like an old body style. I don't know either. Maybe that's just his sunny day truck. Sunny day. Mail. Could be. Could be. I don't know. Maybe he gets better gas mileage than whatever he's got covered, like his van or something. Maybe, Maybe. he's got a van. Maybe, but I'd sure rather drive the bigger car and have yeah. it covered. I'd be scared I'd lose some of these packages. I mean, they were packed in there. How would he know where to get them out? Well, he's probably got it I all. I guess he's got them in boxes. Well, it'd be the same as your stuff driving in the back. Yeah. I was thinking they were just all piled in there, but they must have had them in boxes. They were packed in there pretty. I mean, you know, you could see the big ones sticking out of the, yeah. out of the top. I don't know. I don't know. It sure caught my eye, and I've never seen that before. I've only ever seen a rural mail carrier in a enclosed kind of vehicle. Yeah. This was not. It was a sunny vehicle. day today. Well, thankful. They better hope a big cloud. Maybe his other truck up. was broke down. Well, I mean, that's a possibility, but yeah. I would still be scared that I would lose somebody's parcel. I guess so. But you do what you got to do, right? That's right. You do what you got to do, but it may, it caught my eye. It hmm. did. Little Nissan. That was my first pickup. That was my first vehicle. It was a Nissan pickup truck. Had pink windshield wipe. Hot pink. Hot pink. And there were those dual. You, you know put them on there? No, it was already on there. <laughs> This was before we on. met. It had hot pink windshield wipers, which at the time I thought was the jam. I thought it was so cool. You left them on there. Oh, heck yeah, girl. I left them on there. Hmm. What you talking about? My first vehicle was my mama's car. And it was not very attractive. And it was old. Um. I think it was a 79 model mm -hmm. Toyota Toyota um, Corolla. 79 Corolla. It was gold. Yeah. And this was in, what, 88. Is that when I turned 16? Was it 88? 90, maybe? I can't even remember. No, it would not be. It would be 92. Yeah. 92. I would have been 91. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm telling y'all a anyway. story. Mine was a early 80s Nissan pickup truck. But what was so bad about mine was um, the school I went to, 
most people had new cars. Yeah. And my daddy did not believe in new vehicles for my mama, for himself. <laughs> For anybody. For anybody. <laughs> and so I was doing really good to have what I had. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I was appreciative of it. But we all had our new n- numbered parking spots in the parking lot. Right. And on each side of me, you know, would be this car that you wouldn't want to scratch up. But mine, however, you wouldn't have known it if he <laughs> got a scratch on it. It wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have mattered. So I can remember one Valentine's Day... Um, I always wanted a better car, but I never asked for it. Right. One Valentine's Day, my uncle, who lives in Tuscaloosa, came to visit us. And this was a you know pretty regular occurrence. But that day, I had in my mind that my daddy was getting Uncle Barry's car to give to me. I don't know why. I can remember it like it was yesterday. I kept looking out my bedroom window, and he had a little red Honda Civic. Yeah. Which was way better than what I had. Right. And uh, I can remember him driving off in his little red Honda Civic with my head being hung down because I had it in my mind. You were getting that car. Because it was like a weekday. It was an odd day for him to come for a visit. Oh, I bet you were just. Oh, I was kind of heartbroken. Yeah. But you know what? What? The first car that I ever owned that I that I was yeah you know not embarrassed of I paid for with my own money. I know that car. I paid two thousand one hundred sixty six dollars <laughs> and forty three cents. I wrote a check for it, and my daddy traded um, something that car. I guess he yeah, traded something so. or he helped me buy it somehow. Uh-huh. Somehow that's. That was my remainder of what I had right. to pay. And it was much, much better than what I had. However, it still wasn't. I was proud of it. Remember how proud I, I was? I know exactly how proud of it you were. But it was a five-speed. Yeah. And um, that was something, you know, that just about everybody knew how to drive five-speed. Now, it's like nobody Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't hardly even make five-speeds anymore. I was trying to think. My first, I, was, I don't know. I, I, it was probably a little, Third or fourth vehicle before I got automatic, I'm guessing. Feels like everything was a five speed. Uh, my little Nissan was a five speed. I bet Michael had. No, he didn't. Michael didn't have pink windshield wipers or something. I, let me show you something. Let me show you this. I don't know of anybody that had pink windshield wipers. But I'm telling you, the parking lot that I was parked in, everybody had a new car. So pink windshield wipers would have looked kind of silly Yeah. on a new car because everybody drove. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. Look at that. Look at that ride. Look at that ride. I had them chrome bullet hole wheels. Y'all look at here. Now, this is the one and only Mike Key right there when he was 16. I remember that truck. His hair is longer than mine. It was. It I was don't ever remember mine. him looking quite like that. He had a full-fledged mullet. He did. Mine's long on top. <laughs> there, Mike. Oh, I mean, I'm goodness. just saying, Mike. <laughs> but, y'all, my, I can <sighs> remember. I went to a different school before I went to this school where everybody drove nice cars. Yeah. And I played softball. And so, in the afternoon, somebody would come pick me up way after school. You know, it'd be like 5 or 5.30. Whoever got off first, my mom or daddy would come pick me up. And my daddy drove the worst car in the whole city of Selma. I'm not kidding. I think he did it to make a point. <laughs> but it was this oh, orangish, reddish Toyota. It did not have air conditioner. It was a Corolla, wasn't it? And I don't even know if Thank they you. made Corollas back during this car. Mm. But y'all, it toughened me up. It toughened my skin up. <laughs> and... <laughs> and he would come all the way to the softball field, you know, yeah, like yeah. like I wanted him to park out front and me walk in the front so nobody mm-hmm. saw this car that he was driving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He gonna pull up to the softball field, honk of the horn, you know, Brooks, Daddy's here <laughs> to pick her up. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was terrible. Oh goodness, it was terrible. But it made me, it made me appreciate. He did not have. A vehicle with an air conditioner on it up until the day he died. 
He didn't. Never had a vehicle with air conditioning. And y'all, it gets hot in Alabama in the summer. It does get hot. Here he was going through cancer treatment. He took a medication that was called interferon. And it basically, um, you know, build makes your immune system fight. So he would have 105, 106 temperature. Mm-hmm. Come home at lunch, take his medicine, take a little bit of a nap, and go back to work on a 100-degree day with that truck with no air conditioning. With a suit on. With a suit on mm-hmm. because he worked at the funeral home. So needless to say, he never cared about a vehicle. Chevy Love. He had a Chevy Love. Oh, y'all, it was so terrible. What did he trade for that Chevy Love? He must have, he needed a truck, I think. And he traded that little orange red. He bought that Chevy Love from uh, from, Clint. Uh, from Clint. Okay. And then it had body work and he did the body work itself and sprayed it with spray paint cans. Yeah, it was yellow. <laughs> you remember? It was he, yellow. He took all the body parts off because he found them at the junkyard and sprayed it with the, to make it match. He was something else. <laughs> that Chevy love. Very not um, <laughs> a materialistic <sighs> at all. None whatsoever. Yeah. Did not care. Uh, now, he always had a nice car for my mama. Mm-hmm. Um, she drove the nice car. But, and, and if she did not work, on, like she was off on Mondays. Mm-hmm. So if she was at home on that day, and he had his treatment or whatever, he would drive her car back to the funeral home because she insisted he yeah. didn't have an air conditioner. And it was like 80 red lights in between our house and the funeral home. He was. So, you know, lot. about the time you got got going, the wind started blowing yeah. on you, it was time to stop again. And that, that Alabama heat. Mm. It was rough. It was rough. I won't ever forget. So my first job when I graduated was I was a parts delivery. Worked at the part houses. The local part houses here actually would deliver the parts to the shops. And um, so that's what I was. And all those were stick shifts. And none of them had air conditions in it. And y'all, when he got off of work, he came directly to my parents' house to see me. Yeah. And he stunk. I bet I did. Every day he stunk. It was His rough. underarm deodorant was not <laughs> working. Y'all, it would be so hot. I tell you, this is how hot it is. <laughs> this is... So... I was delivering parts and it was constant. I mean, it was, it was all day. You, you'd go in and there'd be a part on the, on the table and you pick and go deliver it. So I'm delivering parts and there was this one road I'm going down and it was back road. So there wasn't any traffic. So and we knew all the shortcuts. And so we're, I'm going down this road and it was a stop sign there, but I did, I just yielded. I didn't come to a complete stop. Nobody around. Right. So I yielded and it kept on. Next thing I know, whoop, 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 whoop. I was like, oh my gracious. And I didn't really know what I'd done wrong, to be honest with you. It was a, it was a police officer on a motorcycle. Pulled me over. Hot summer day. He gets off there. And of course, he asked me, he said, you, you know what you did wrong? I said, sir, I, I really have no clue. He said, well, you ran a stop sign. You didn't come to a complete stop. You ran a stop sign. I was like, of course, I'm sorry. You know, I, you know, I'm out here delivering parts, you know, just, he was like, okay. And he went back to the back, took my license, you know, felt like forever. I mean, I felt like I was sitting there for two hours. It's probably, you know, long enough to call in, make sure I ain't have no warrants or nothing on me, you know? So he comes back and he hands me my license and he said, you go on now. And I was like, are you really? He said, he said, yes, sir. He said, it is hot. And you out here trying to make a living. And you really didn't do nothing that bad. I'm gonna let you go. And um, so that's how hot it was. He felt sorry for me. Well, he's on the motorcycle, so he had to feel sorry <laughs> for himself rocked. too. He knew what I felt like. It wasn't Barney, was it? No, it wasn't oh, Barney. Okay. It was um, it was um, Nicks. Mr. Nix. Yeah. And there's a thing about Mr. Nix. He was not known. To he be the was known guy. to be. The cop you did not want to get pulled over by. Nope. And I grew up with his son, and he was actually one of my best friends for several years. Did you ever know that? I didn't know that. Bruno. I did not know that. That's what I they do. called him because his daddy was the manager of a grocery store called oh, Bruno's. Oh, okay. His name was Roy, but yeah, Bruno. But n- it nobody. didn't matter if I knew him. 
<laughs> it didn't matter. No if, funny. If he had pulled me over, I'd have got a ticket. When I saw it was Mr. Nix that pulled me over, I automatically knew I was getting the ticket. Oh, Without sure. a doubt. Sure. I mean, You he, passed him on the road. <laughs> he was going to get you. You hit those brakes. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. He was going to get you. Oh, me. But he did feel sorry for me that day, and he let me go, and I never forgot that. He should have felt sorry for you. And I think I even had a cast on because I broke my hand. Oh, ankle. goodness gracious. We don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> so I was driving that stick shift with the cast. Here's the funny thing. These trucks were old Chevy S10s. I mean, they were war slap. I mean, war out. And a buddy of mine, James, mm -hmm. um, he had graduated, and he started working at the post office. I thought you were going to say with you and all. No, 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 no. Work mm -mm. With you. So James is delivering mail and I'm delivering parts. Uh -huh. And I would see James up ahead. <laughs> so this is what I would do. I'd put that S10 in neutral and I'd rev it up a couple of times and cut it off <laughs> and cut it back on. And y'all, it would make the loudest backfire. Oh, I'm Jason. talking about boom, boom, boom. <laughs> mail would fly up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, oh, James. Oh, my gracious. He gets so mad at me. But it was funny. <laughs> it was funny. I'd get him, I'd, I would get him at least two times a week. Oh, my gracious. <laughs> well, I never knew the truck would do that. And it's probably oh, a gosh. good thing. Oh, I tell you, the, the craziest place I've done it at. And this is, I'm 18 years old. So I'm, I'm completely immature. You know, downtown. Yeah. Got all the buildings down right. there. I decided one day to do it down there. So here I go up. Wow, 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 wow. Cut it off. Cut it back on. Boom, boom. And it echoed off the buildings. <laughs> it was weird. And I was like, I better not do that again. It's they probably, probably were calling 911. Probably saying, so. I would I don't need to do that again. This was uh, 1995. And things didn't blow up as excessively as they <laughs> no, do today. You wouldn't want to do it today. No. <laughs> you definitely you, get in you trouble see today. People ducking everywhere oh, if it happened. Unfortunately, <laughs> oh. times have changed. But that little yellow truck that my daddy had, that courier, and at some point he traded the same guy he got the yellow truck from uh -huh. for a blue Chevrolet S10. That's the one he did the body work on, not the Chevy Not the love. yellow one. I could not figure him Sorry. painting that yellow one. It was the blue one he did the body work on. The blue one. It came with a red door, and he painted it blue. Painted it blue. He went and got the door. I remember that. Yeah. So um, we had a dog at the time that Jason bought for me for Christmas present. Yeah. Bought for me for a Christmas present. Well, I lived at home with my parents, but you know, back then you didn't think about asking people's parents ahead of time if you could buy their daughter a dog. Well, I was fixing to say, uh, if there's anybody out there that is um, uh, in your teens, um, ask ask the uh, well girlfriend at the time. <laughs> ask your girlfriend's parents first before you buy them a pet. It's a very important step <laughs> towards. If you want to marry this person, you really <laughs> want to take the necessary steps. Uh, because at the time, we had always had one dog. Yeah. And we had one dog, and that one dog was a Doberman Pinscher. That's right. And y'all know Doberman Pinschers are just, um, well, they're they're protective yeah, dogs. Yeah. That's what they're bred to do is protect. My daddy spent the, a lot of nights away from home being that he worked at the funeral home. And so Maggie was a good dog for my mom and I to have at home. Nobody's going to go in a house with a Doberman Pinscher. Yeah. Right? That's right. So Maggie was on up in age. And uh, here comes my boyfriend, who's uh, 18 at the time, had saved up his money and went and bought me an AKC registered Labrador Retriever puppy. Without asking your parents. Without asking my parents. And Needless she, to say, they were not happy with me at all. Um, <laughs> she was very, very cute. But I had no way to purchase food for this oh. dog. <laughs> See, you don't think about that. No. Know? And plus, I was in school, so I'm at school mm. from 8 to 3, and my oh, mom goodness. and daddy both work. But now I have a puppy that I've got to take care of, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Well, 
I don't remember it ever getting real nasty because I think no. my parents loved the dog. It, it didn't, but the, when I first brought it in, um, you got stern talking to the look. The look <laughs> on your parents' face was priceless. And matter of fact, when I they were not gonna let you keep it when I first brought it there. That 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 day, they were not gonna let you keep it. Funny thing is, the <laughs> registered papers. Or what my daddy named her. Yeah. It was my dog. My daddy named her. Yep. He named her D-O-G. Yeah. D-O-G. D-O-G. And we didn't call her D-O-G. He wrote dog on the papers. <laughs> so we called her Do. D-O-O. -O. Yeah. I don't know why. I but y'all, Do, she was the best. One of well, I'm not, I'm not even gonna go there. She was a good dog. Mm -hmm. I've had lots of lots of animals since yeah, do yeah. and before do, but um, she was a wonderful dog that my parents absolutely adored. Yeah, not to say more so than me, but right. they were home a lot more than I was. I was a teenager and I was on the go. Yeah, that dog quickly. I wasn't a bad guy too long. No, <laughs> do because I mean y'all on my daddy's off day he. He and that dog were like this. They were. They went fishing. They went everywhere. They went. Um, my point was. No air conditioning at all. No air conditioning. <laughs> and the dog never learned to ride in the back of the truck. No. She was a front seat yeah, riding dog. Yeah. Even in the car. She rode, you know, in the front seat of the car. That's right. Um, <clears throat> but he was very attached to this dog. And at somehow that yellow truck was running good. And the guy that had sold my daddy the yellow truck had a blue truck. And a little it was bit newer. It went from a, a Chevy Love to an S10. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was a good bit newer. But it had some body problems. It looked like Michael Key's truck. It I did. Just it did, except for it had it some body problems. It wasn't that fly, though. It wasn't, as, wasn't that fly. And it needed a motor. <laughs> oh, it did need a motor? Yes. You I don't, don't remember that I part? I don't remember that part. So Clint wanted to swap my daddy the blue truck for the yellow truck. Because he needed something that ran. Okay. And he didn't have the money to fix the blue truck. I got you. Well, it was worth it for my daddy to help his buddy out, to give him something that ran, and mm. to put a new motor in yeah. the other truck so he could have a much newer truck with not so many Still problems. no air conditioning. Still no air yeah. conditioning. <laughs> so every time my daddy went somewhere that wasn't to work, do went with him. And this one particular time, they were going to Kentucky Fried Chicken to pick up something to eat. <laughs> and this person slammed on brakes in front of my oh, daddy. Man. And my daddy had to hit the brakes really hard and went down in a gully and came back out on the other side to avoid hitting the car. Mm -hmm. Well, Dew was in the truck and Dew's head hit the windshield, but she was okay. Mm -hmm. From that point forward, Dew would never ride in the truck with my daddy again. That was it. Never. If daddy took mm. do somewhere, they had to go in the car. Because <laughs> it traumatized her that bad. And my mama was so oh angry because they had had the little incident and do was so scared. <laughs> but it beat having an actual wreck, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. But the ditch, he came out on the other side and poor little do it just... You know, you, you didn't think of a dog seat belt back then or the dog safety. Right, it's, right. It's, it's more about having your companion with yeah. you and doing, you know, something that's fun for the Most dog. Most everybody put them in the <laughs> back of the truck. But you don't see that much anymore either. No, you don't. But it had Dew been mm. in the back of the truck, it yeah. would have been much worse. She would have been thrown out. I mean, when I was a kid, when we, when talking about back of the truck, we played Little League Baseball. And when we left Little League Baseball, we'd drive like, what was it, five blocks yeah. to Dairy Queen? Yeah. Went long. But we rode in the back of the truck. Right. Crazy how times has changed. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's quite different. But let one thing <clears> happen and you wouldn't have rode in the back of that truck again be like, dude. <laughs> You're right. But it wasn't me. It would be like the whole baseball oh, team. Oh, yeah, I know. We'd all be in the back of the truck. But, y'all, that poor dog, I mean, she was traumatized to the point where I don't care what my daddy did. Mm -hmm. He tried everything to get her to ride with him again, and she was not going to do it. That was over. That was it. She that would was ride it. with him, yeah. just not in that truck. Yeah. She associated that truck with, you know, crash. Sad. Mm. It was sad. Mm. But um, when my daddy got really, really sick, I would say 
he was more attached to the dog than any of us. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you think? Oh yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Um, it was, it became his dog. And when he got really, really sick, do would no longer go in the bedroom where he was. Mm -hmm. And y'all, it was so weird because she slept in the bed with my parents mm -hmm. and here she was all of a sudden she wouldn't go in the bedroom anymore. She, it was like, you know, she knew mm -hmm. and that was it. I mean, just weird, it weird was. how that the was. senses work. Really she was, was a super smart dog. And in the end, they would not have traded do for the world. But bringing that puppy up there <laughs> to a 17-year-old, who's going to care for it? It was not a good idea. Oh, it wasn't a good idea at all. But I thought it was at the time. <clears throat> so I thought, you know, Jason wanted a dog. Why does that look like that? the number is it okay uh-huh okay so i don't know why um like. you know jason was a year older than me so he <laughs> saved up his money to buy do for me which at the time was a lot of money i mean mm -hmm. you know it was probably 200 dollars for a registered lab mm -hmm. wouldn't you say at the time maybe oh yeah it was probably about 200 bucks yeah <clears throat> and um i wanted to get him a dog because he he didn't have a dog. Yeah. And so he lived um, at his parents' house and I didn't have any money. So me and my friend Kelly, the animal shelter was across the river at that time. Oh, it was. I remember that. Yeah. Across the and river. And Jason loved do. Oh, yeah. And so I wanted to get Jason a do. And I thought I would be frugal. Y'all know I like to save money and, and do things on the cheap way. So I did just that. Kelly and I went to the animal shelter. And we picked out the most lab-looking dog there. They, they told you that they thought it was a lab. They thought it was a lab. Mm -hmm. And we got him, and his name was Bud. Named him Bud. Bud. And Jason had to build a, a fenced-in area at his parents' house to keep Bud in. But Bud would not stay in the fence. Listen, y'all, this dog right here was not. He was, I don't know if he, I don't know if he'd been locked up in a foolproof kennel or what, but he was. He was not staying in, and we had a big backyard. Yeah. He was not staying in a fence, period, nothing. And so you think, well, I guess he just dug out. He didn't dig out, y'all. He climbed the fence. He climbed the fence. And and as he got older, not, he would no longer climb the fence. Bud would jump the fence. And Bud was probably, what, a medium-sized dog? He was smaller than Sonny. Yeah. He probably weighed... 50 pounds? If that. 30 to 50 pounds would jump the fence. So so Jason was, bought his first house. Yeah. And and moved. And, of course, he took Bud with him. And at this house, there was a privacy fence, y'all. Privacy a fence. A six-foot privacy fence. And the privacy fence is made out of wood with no way to grip it. Wouldn't keep Bud in. Wouldn't but climb it. Jason would go to work. <laughs> and he would have to go back home a certain way because bud <clears throat> went to this place every day by some railroad tracks and laid out there with a group of not taking care of dogs yeah and jason would have to put him in his truck every single day and take him back home it was crazy i could not keep him in the house bless his heart i mean in the yard for nothing I what mean, was that white dog's name that he was such good friends with xena and I can't, we called her, we called her the lady dog. Lady dog. That's right. <laughs> the lady dog. And the lady she dog. She had a real, she looked like a little lady. <laughs> I don't remember oh, why yeah. we called her That's that. That's why she looked like a little, she looked like a little. She was look like a white German shepherd. She looked of. like a little lady, and that's why we <laughs> called her lady dog. <laughs> her face was real pointed. <laughs> real pointed. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the crazy yeah. thing, y'all. This white dog that we named Lady live next door to us mm -hmm. and her and bud would go several blocks down the road to these railroad tracks where the doctor's office was and that's where they'd be all day long all day and so jason would go you know drive up drop his tailgate bud would get in the back of the truck mm -hmm. go home with you and the next thing we know well lady would be back home too yeah but lady had to run home because she wasn't our dog right, right? We weren't married at the time. We didn't live together or anything, but yeah. he just would go by there every day and pick Bud up. Oh, y'all. Because we were, we've were we always been responsible pet owners, yeah. but this was beyond being responsible. 
I don't know how old Bud was. Bud just, I think, I think Bud kind of did like Bear and just went off and. Y'all, we um, I lived with my parents and yeah. we lived in a, it had a chain link fence, but it had bushes all the way around it, like red tips, a privet or something. Yeah, it was something it was like, like a that. hedge. You saw? Did you see him that day? When he cleared it? Yeah. Yes. Cleared it. So Jason would bring Bud over to my parents' house to play with Dew. And we would, you know, put him in the cha- in the backyard. And after a few times of him being there, he would sail all the way over. At least five foot. Oh, it was way higher than that. The chain link was five foot. And the bushes were like, I could not reach the top of them. I trimmed the hedges. Oh, I Bud did it. I don't know how he did it either. He was, if y'all saw your picture of Bud, he was just a little old. Scrap dog. Grony looking. He was 100% of mutt. He, he was not near no Labrador. I don't mm. know what he was. But if, if we would have sent his DNA in, it definitely would have came back super mutt. Yes, it would have. But he he's could jump like nobody's business. Super mutt. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped so high. I have no idea. I, I can remember cutting those hedges, and my hands would have to reach as far <laughs> as I could to trim those hedges. But Bud mm. could clear it. He could clear it. Got out on Dixie Drive, which the highway he was clear. was right near there. Oh my goodness! And um, he, he never Ooh. went far. No, he never. He went just far. did not want to be in the fence. He, I guess he wanted to be with other dogs. All I can, think. I guess maybe that's what it was. Well, he sure loved Lady, <laughs> and I don't ever remember what happened to Lady. Um, oh, I used to cut somebody said Air Bud. I would call him Air Bud. Yes, because he could really do oh, it. <laughs> that when we saw him. When you moved from your parents' house yeah. to the house that you bought, mm-hmm. we were so thankful because we thought, well, Bud can't get out anymore. We've got a privacy fence. He's got a privacy fence. We're, we're completely in, the, in clear. the clear. Yep. we got privacy fence all the way around. Nope. No problem. Bud laughed at that privacy fence. He sure did. <laughs> he sure did. So after Bud <laughs> passed away, yeah. we didn't immediately um, get any other dogs, but we, we did get... Did we get no? We didn't get Bay from Dew's owner, did we? No, no, no. I got Bay from Hope Hole. I yeah, know, yeah, I don't remember where Dew came from though. I can't. That was. I can't remember. I found, of course, back then we had the bulletin board. So we um. Or the mule trader. We we spent a lot of time taking care of mm-hmm. neighbors' dogs in between, mm-hmm. like the whole neighborhoods stray dogs. Well, they weren't strays, but they didn't stay inside their house. They would come to our house, mm-hmm. and they'd stay inside our house. Dig up my bulbs. Yes, and one of them um, was a golden retriever that I became <clears throat> so attached to. And she might as well have been my dog. Yes. Because the owners did not take care of her. Mm-hmm. Did not take care of her. I bathed her. I never talked to the owners. They live kind of up in a cul-de-sac. Mm-hmm. And um, she spent 90% of her time at our house. Uh, we didn't fence her in our backyard or anything, but we would let her in yeah, the house yeah, and, yeah. you know, give her some extra treats and whatnot. And I can, that house was a rental house. And I can remember, um, this was after Jason and I were married. I was sick mm-hmm. with the flu. I mean, I was, I was sick. And those people had a yard sale and they sold that dog at a yard sale. And if we would have known it, we would have bought her. I mean, I would have gave them all the money I had yeah. yep. <clears throat> because she loved us. Mm-hmm. She looked at us as to be her owners. I don't even, the only reason she would have been there that day is because I was sick. Yeah. You know, right. and she was outside, I guess. But y'all, you want to talk about a heartbreak. It's something mm-hmm. that I still think <clears throat> about and I don't understand it because they had to have known yep. that she, she's, their house was past ours. So every time they went home, they saw she'll be laying in the, in yeah, the yard, yep. and uh, that was her real name from them, but I just you know kept it. Oh my gosh, y'all! You want to talk about a heartbreak? That was terrible. Mm-hmm. And we had we had Bay and Moose at that time, didn't we? Eventually, I think we had Bay and Moose when Eventually. Shelby was hanging out. Yeah, because Shelby wanted to be with our dogs. Do you remember she'd want to be in the backyard? I, she I would put remember. herself yeah. in the backyard. She would. She would climb the fence and go into the backyard. Yeah. Rather than, or dig under. She would dig. Because she wanted to be with our dogs so bad, or in mm. our backyard. Oh, huh. Shelby. Mm-hmm-mm. I saw that Nick said earlier, 
bit, they would get in the back of the truck after baseball and chant. Now, Nick, I don't know what chant y'all did. Now, the chant we did when we was in Little League, and it was only when we played Ziggler's. Now, Ziggler's is a uh, meat company. Meat company. It baloney and... They shut down, didn't they? I think so. But that was a big operation in Selma. But we played Ziggler's. There was a I was People's Bank, and they were Ziggler's. We, when we beat Ziggler's, we would say pork chop, pork chop, greasy, greasy. We beat Ziggler's easy, easy. I remember that. I Except I played in the in the Metaview League, and you played in the Edgewood League. But I still remember. Yeah, that. we had two leagues, baby. And I still remember. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know. Them, everybody said that about Ziggler. It was you. always Ziggler's because they was the meat company. That's and they were the say best team, chop, I chop. think. I don't know if, if, if that was a common common chant for anybody or we just, if Made it was it just up. passed down because it was Ziggler's because they, they probably sold pork chops. Oh, I'm sure they yeah. did. Yeah. Huh. They were black and white. No. People's Bank was black and white. I, we were, we were, or we had white, we had those white. What was Ziggler's in? Ziggler's, I believe, was red. They were oh. red and white. We were black and white. We had those white jerseys that were made out of plastic. Yeah, almost. they had holes in them. Had I told you I was a girl, them. and I was the only girl, and that didn't go real well. It had the, the puffy felt iron-on letters that somebody's mama ironed on there for us. It said People's Bank. <laughs> I think the Shirt Shack made it was all the I think uniforms. it was. But there were still those felt letters. Mm. Those felt letters. Well, they were like vinyl. They did. Some of them were like vinyl. Mine but were vinyl. Ours was more like felt, I, fi I feel like. But that, man, that, oh my goodness, that jersey. It stick to you? It stuck to you. It's in the hats for. Trucker the, hats. Yeah, and they were five times this big. They and were they like had this. That, had that, like, string. String went across. That went across the. It did, a little string went across there. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> Oh my gracious! Reminiscing, reminiscing. Oh goodness! But we had um, at some point after after Bud passed away, yeah, we ended up getting our own lab, babe. and you we weren't married. Mm -mm. I went we and got weren't babe. married when me uh, and my cousin went and got Bay Starsky. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, I went at some point. Okay, so anyway, Jason. No, nope, no, nope, you're right. I went because I remember you the went. house. Me and you went. I went with Starsky to go get him a chocolate lab. Yes, from the same. That's people. what it was. Same people. You're right. Um. So you're right. We love do so much that we knew that we probably should probably get a lab. Yeah. And y'all, she was the smartest dog I think we've ever owned. Bay? Yes. Yeah, Bay was smart. She was so smart. So Jason worked at the funeral home at the time, and there were nights that he would have to work all night. Mm -hmm. And do you remember it was like Valentine's or something, and you had Hershey Kisses? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was on the counter. They were on the counter. They and the so counter. Bay got the Hershey Kisses down and ate, I don't know how many. But here's the thing. She didn't eat the... Rapper. She didn't eat the full. She unwrapped every one <laughs> of them. She unwrapped them all. Of course, I freaked out because dogs are not supposed to have chocolate. So I freaked out and called the vet immediately. And he said that at her size, he was more concerned about her eating the full than he was the amount of chocolate. It was. I was ate. like, well, it's a whole bag of Hershey Kisses. He says, she's a big dog. Don't worry about it. She's going to be fine. But what about the full? What about the full? I said, she unwrapped them all. <laughs> she unwrapped And he them said, all. what? I said, she, un listen, I, we didn't have cell phones. I couldn't have taken a picture of it. Right. But I said, there's 50 aluminum <laughs> wrappers right here. She unwrapped them all. She unwrapped them all. And that is phenomenal. Yeah. So, Bay was, you know, she was the only dog. And there were times that, you know, we went fishing and whatnot. And we'd take Bay with us. But Bay needed a friend. Yeah. And so, Jason worked with a guy that was moving or something. Anyway, he needed to rehome his dog and it was a male supposedly top bred labrador retriever mm -hmm. so we went out to their house and we looked at him and you know as well as i do you don't just go look at dogs oh my goodness you go he was a cute fella you go to look at something he was probably what four months old 
Yeah, because he was he was he's a he was a big dog. He was a big dog. He was a big lab. His he was head like, was huge, and his name fit him perfect. He already had a name. They already named him, and they named him the perfect name. I mean, he was huge. He was Rocky and Bandit size. He was a big boy, and his name was Moose. His name was Moose, and yeah. bef- he's the the first. Bay was an everybody dog. She'd go everybody where whatever. Moose was one hundred percent my dog. Wherever I went, Moose went, and, and just uh, was just he was just like Holly is. Yes, and we never thought in a million years that there would be another Moose because he was so laid back, so laid back, and he was so devoted to Jason that when Moose passed away, it I mean it just about killed Jason. Yeah, because he was so just. And it was years before I even attempted to get another dog. Years. Yeah. Years. He um thing about Moose though was is he had retinal dysplasia, so he was basically blind. And, and in daylight it was worse. He couldn't see anything during the day. No, y'all. He would at night he could see a little bit, but during the day he couldn't see a lick. He Nothing. would run into things. He would. Um he, he just would. had no no vision when the sun was bright. But he was a Labrador Retriever, which are the most nicest dogs in the world. And Moose was so laid back. But if another dog come up that he did not know, oh, my gracious. He turned into Cujo. It was rough. And I always said it was because he couldn't see. Yeah. Um, they Those two dogs, they, they rode in the back of the truck. Yeah. And we like to take them to the marina. Because we had a big Alabama River was right down the road from us. And mm-hmm. There was a marina; it was concrete, and so labs like to swim. We didn't have access to any water except mm-hmm. for public, and we would take the dogs in the back of the truck and take them to the marina and let them swim. Well, there was this one area in our neighborhood mm-hmm. where dogs were not put up; they just roamed free, and. We would either have to put Jason in the back of the truck because it was a regular cab truck. Yeah, I'd have to ride back there with him. Jason would have to get in the back of the truck and ride with him to Bay did nothing. She was fine. She could have cared less. <laughs> she could care less. Not she, loose. Bay was like the mama. You know, <laughs> she just took care of everything. Oh my gracious. Uh, Bay was alive when Mary Carl was born. Not Moose. Moose passed away Moose, yeah. long before that. Yeah. But um she was the mama and she always kind of took care of Moose. Yeah. You know, she kind of looked after him, and and Jason would get in the back of the truck with him, and that would that would solve the issue of him turning was, into Cujo. He was protective now, boy. He would protect me. The who the first ooh. time it ever happened, it scared both of us to death. Yeah, that he rode in the truck and and, and saw those other dogs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, our biggest fear was <clears throat> him him getting ran over, and mm-hmm. second of all, was getting into a fight that he couldn't handle. We didn't want him to get in a fight anyway. Yeah. It was it was a bad situation. He was a big boy. Because we had no way to haul those two big dogs unless they were in the back of the truck. Mm-hmm. So this would have been, what, 98? Mm-hmm. Something like that. I don't know. We might have been married. It might have been 2000, 2001. Yeah. Something like that. Mm. But um, after my daddy died, my mama would bring Dew over to the house in which we lived in a little neighborhood at the time and do love to ride in the car. And she would get so excited when she knew that she was getting near our neighborhood because she had a buddy that lived across the street. Remember him? I can't remember his name. Miss Jacko. I can't. Oh yeah. 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 Dude didn't really what was his name? jive with other dogs either, but she just didn't care about him. She liked him a lot. She and him were best friends. What name though? What was his name? Golly. What not Buddy? Nope. Um, he was just a big old mutt. And Dude would have to come to the house to come see her friend, which she was spayed and he was neutered, but right. they were best friends. Yeah, they were buddies. So that's why she got so excited when she got to come to our house because she got to see her friend. God, what was his name? That's going to drive me crazy. I don't know what his <laughs> name was. I bet Mama will remember. She probably will. Oh, goodness. He was beautiful. Though. He was beautiful. He reminds me of, of Rocky or Bandit, but in a darker color. Yeah, I think you're right. He was a big boy. He, he wasn't that big, but he was a big boy. Oh, he nobody's that big, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> Our boys are big boys. Yeah. <laughs> they're, 
they're big and fuzzy. They are huge. And you know, I thought to begin with that Bandit's hair was gonna not be so thick. To me it's thick. now, that you can't tell the difference in their hair. It's so, both. They're so thick. So let me tell y'all what I did the other night talking about Bandit. So we've had three three nights straight of temperatures getting to thirty two degrees. And so I've brought my seed, my, my seed starts inside and I had brought them inside that night. And for some reason, I didn't think about my African blue basil that I've been took cuttings of that I've been babying for all winter, November, December, January, uh, four months now, babying them. I'm talking about how many times has your timer went off? It says reminder to get the basil in. Did not think anything about the basil, and it was gonna get like thirty that night, y'all. Pup pup. Pup pup. That was his name. Yep. Pup pup. 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 Sorry, <laughs> I've been thinking about it the whole time. Two o'clock a.m. I wake up, and the first thing that hits my mind is, "Well, dead sleep." My Isn't that basil. Funny how things. I forgot my basil, so I got my my little pajama pants over here. I put them on, put a t-shirt <laughs> on, no jacket, no nothing. I put my boot. Didn't even put no socks on. I put my boots <laughs> on. Two o'clock in the morning, I go out there, and I, I got my flashlight on my phone, and I'm shining over there. And y'all, lo and behold, sitting in the backyard, just like this, was Bandit, and he looked over at me, and I thought he was gonna bark. And he ain't barking You're like, yeah, you tipped my head. You know? <laughs> he like, and went back over and just when he was looking, scanning the down horizon. that hill, just just watching back there in the backyard. And it just, I was like, goodness gracious, that that is just, it's just awesome that well, how those dogs work. And so of course I went and got my basil and I, I tipped my hat back at him. <laughs> I went back inside, and uh, luckily the basil's okay. Okay, matter of fact, I put it out today. Yeah, and you got a reminder set for tonight. I do got a reminder set because it's supposed to get 36-ish, something like that. And I don't, I want to be safe. I don't want you to lose it at this point. So I'm going to bring everything back in. And, um, sorry, y'all. Oh, you posted it. Ah, uh, golly. I'm trying to block it now. But lo and behold, my basil's okay. Been babying it too long. <laughs> and, and so he he brought it in and he set it beside the kitchen sink. Yeah. And well, I've looked at it a many a time since it's been coming in and out. I got to looking at it today or yesterday mm -hmm. morning, whenever it was. And y'all, that stuff is huge. My basil? Yes. You want to see? I pulled one up because I was curious about the I roots. bet it's root bound. It's just amazing. I cut them. I just cut it off. Stuck it in the dirt. And that's and it, it. Took, and it's got roots like this. And it it will not reseed itself, and that's why you had to take the cuttings. Yeah. Because it's um it's a well variety. no it will reseed itself. It's a hybrid, so it won't breed true. Uh, yeah. So it's a it's a hybrid basil that the bees absolutely go crazy about. And, and Jason from Petals enforced it. Y'all have got to take cuttings. And that's why. Yes. That's why because they took one type of basil and another type of basil and they cross pollinated them and came up with this basil and it's called african blue basil and the bees y'all the bees will go this I is mean, this is the one where the, where the bees go just like that to get through a little yes. spot in the fence yes so that they can get to that basil it is they love it so but we only had what three plants last year two two yeah and they get big oh they get big they so get big. i cannot imagine what yeah. it's going to be like this year I yeah. mean, with this many plants, how many do you have? It's a lot. I think it's 48, but I'm not for sure. Some of them didn't make it all the way, but I think it's about 80% of them. It's it's a lot of plants. It's probably about 30. You're going to pull in the driveway and you're going to hear... <laughs> oh, between that and the uh, flowers are growing this year and the cover crops, the bees should be happy. Oh, I wanted to address something. Yeah. Um, I did a video, and if you didn't see it, uh, it's about putting up a purple martin pole yeah. in our backyard. A gentleman from our hometown, he builds these, and some people were wanting to know where could they purchase one. Well, unless you're local, there's no way that you yeah. can purchase it because it's so big. That's right. And I should have said that in the video. I just didn't think about it. 
But um, I was going to address the fact that a lot of people said, won't the Purple Martins eat all your bees? Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of thousands of bees in those boxes. And us attracting a few Purple Martins to this area is not going to. No, it wouldn't be any different than putting bird houses out there. Like bluebirds eat nothing but insects. Um, and then swallows. And a purple martin is a swallow. It's the same bird as a swallow. They're the just, largest swallow. But it's just called purple martin versus a barn swallow, whatever. So, no, they'll be completely fine. It won't be any different than than nature itself. So, we should be completely fine. And another whatsoever. thing was, yeah. won't that pole attract lightning? Mm -hmm. No more so than our house. Yeah. I mean, our house is... is it's a barn medium. It's metal. Mm -hmm. And that pole is not as tall as our house. And it's it's not going to, if it does get mm -hmm. hit by lightning, nothing's going to happen. It's yeah, just, I it's think just it a be metal fine. pole. Yeah, so. I think we'll be fine. I really do. Um, gosh, I was fixing to say something. I should have not. No, 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 no. Can't remember what it was now. Something about the barn swallows? No, it was before that. Before we start talking about the Purple Martin house. Oh, well. I can't remember. <laughs> oh, I know what it was. A lot of people were asking, was my garden okay? Yeah, garden's fine. Oh, yeah. This is a winter garden. As long as it doesn't get like 20 and below, I won't have to do nothing to the garden. It, it'll be perfectly fine. No, the garden likes the cold temperatures. Mm -hmm. It's it likes just cooler the temps. frigid, frigid air that we're not used to in yeah. Alabama, except for a couple of nights. Mm -hmm. um, hey, I think I noticed that the strawberries were uncovered. Did you? I think so. I saw some that weren't today. Oh, well, maybe I, yeah. I'm yeah. talking out of my head. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Strawberries have got to be getting close to ready to be uh -huh. picked. We have so many strawberry farms around here. Oh, we got a bunch. And I there. didn't realize that until we moved to Chilton County. Because Dallas County, which is just one county over, yep. there were no strawberry farms. No. And then you go one county to the north, and it's like, it's strawberry country. So, you know, it's got to do with elevation and all that good yep. stuff, I'm sure, of what does well and what doesn't. Just like pe peach country. Peach country, yeah. Peaches everywhere here. You didn't see anybody growing peaches in Dallas County. Uh-uh, no farms. Um, And I meant 20 degrees or below, not 20, below 20. Oh, no. Like negative 20. 20 if it degrees. was negative 20, I got to go. <laughs> 20 degrees or below. Uh, if, it get, if it gets 24 or something like that, I kind of have to kind of worry. But anything... Above that, we're good. We're good with the fall garden, winter garden. Winter garden. Well, we'll be tilling up our plots soon, soon, getting ready for the uh, summer, spring and summer garden. We're going to cover it back up. So you're going springs in the springs in the air. I think we're less than 30 days away. You know what we saw? What? Flocks. Robins? Flocks. Oh, flocks. Not a flock of birds, no. but flocks. Flocks. I that got you. Pink, hot mm -hmm. pink, hot about... about that. Mm -hmm. One of them is blooming. Not oh, a whole good. bunch. Good. But to me, that's an indication that we're getting close. Good. And I've seen some buds on some trees. Mm. Have you? I have seen some buds. Yes. Um, but not. We've got to watch for the pecan trees. Oh no, it's not ready yeah. yet. It's we're just getting close. Yes. Yeah. Getting close. Getting, getting close. real close. My mama said yesterday she felt like this winter has lasted forever. To me, this winter has been awesome. It's been the mildest winter we've had in a long time, in my opinion. I just don't like it. I mean, I think it's been quite short because November was hot. December was fairly warm. I mean, Christmas, was it, was it cold Christmas? Yes. It was? Yes. I just don't remember. Remember we thought it was going to snow on Christmas? Hmm. I know this. I haven't had to cover the garden but one time. Well, let's hope that that's, that's right. That, that's right. <laughs> we thought it didn't do that anymore, didn't we? <laughs> what I thought. <laughs> well, y'all, I'm cooking a new recipe for dinner tonight. And I'll share it with you now. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how it's going to be. It's going to be good. But it's called Rotel Spaghetti. And Rotel Chicken Spaghetti, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, it is simply spaghetti noodles. On the bottom of a 9 by 13 pan. Mm -hmm. And then it's a can of cream and mushroom soup, a can of chicken broth, and a can of Rotel, which is the tomatoes and chilies. Mm -hmm. Pour that on the top of it. And then you 
boil your chicken mm-hmm. ahead of time. Your noodles are cooked. Boil your chicken, dice it up, put it on the top of that, and then you're going to take um, Velveeta cheese, uh-huh. which I try to stay away from this stuff, but uh-huh. this is a special occasion. <laughs> One pound of Velveeta cheese and cut it, dice it up, put it on top. And cook it in the oven for three fifty on um, three fifty, and I hope it's gonna be good. I don't I've know how I've seen out. a lot of people saying that they've have done it and it is good. Really, it good. is good. Well, I'm excited to try it because yep. um, I think it's gonna be good. But yep. I'm explaining it to Mary Carl. I'm telling her that I'm making Rotel spaghetti tonight. She said, "Ooh, that sounds good." So I start telling her what. I can't believe she said that. Yeah. So I start telling her how to make it. Yeah. I get to the part where the Velveeta cheese goes on the top, and she says, I don't know how it's going to be with that Velveeta on top. I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> what kid does not like Velveeta? You know, I can see her saying, oh, I don't know how it's going to be with that cream and mushroom soup. In yeah, it, yeah. But not the Velveeta. The Velveeta. That's going to make it good. <laughs> so my point was that I already have this prepared. You're it ready, is already. in the refrigerator. All I have to do is take the strand wrap off of it mm-hmm. and put it in the oven. Mm. And I will let y'all know how it is. Mm. I think it's going to be good. Michael Key 7, Camp Stew. Camp Stew, that sounds I said he used a fancy name. Huh. Brunswick yeah. Stew? Yeah, he used, we call it Camp Stew. Well, he's from the same place we are. I know, he's <laughs> trying to be, he's just trying to be up to you up on here. He's, yeah, Emerald. Yeah, I'm trying to be up to Emerald. <laughs> Anyway, oh, goodness. I'm excited to have my dinner already ready. I tell you what, if it's good and we like it, we'll try to get on the website. How about that? Well, it's, it's, it's not an original recipe, though. We'll share it then. How about that? <laughs> we'll share it. Yeah. I don't want to get in trouble. No, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get either. in trouble. Maybe we could change it up a little. Camp stew is Brunswick stew. It's the same thing. Just, I don't know who all calls it camp stew, but here... And in our area, we've always called it camp stew. Well, it may not be the same thing. I think a Brunswick stew is big chunks of meat. I think it's the same thing. I know what Michael's doing. Tastes all. Michael cooked a Boston butt over the weekend, and he's going to use that leftover Boston butt to make that Brunswick stew. I think he said he bought the Brunswick stew. Well, maybe not. Mike didn't eat that Boston butt. He probably did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's going to be good, so. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. And then I got something else I'm going to cook this week that I'll share on the next live. Okay. If I make it. Okay. Hey, there's Ryan. Ryan. Ryan, I told everybody that um you were a little <laughs> delayed on the uh, shipping today, but everything will be right back to normal tomorrow. That's right. Yep. Y'all keep that man busy. That's right. He needs something to do. <laughs> oh. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the live stream. Let's do it like this. I can't do that. Can do that. So you did it. I can't do that. I think my hands just don't do that. <laughs> oh, they do. They Look at there. Did he look like a heart? <laughs> I forget what else it is that it uh, does. Who knows? We got to make it rain. Can't you do that? I don't know about that one. Okay. American League. That's where Michael got the Brunswick too from. We'll catch you on the next one. Y'all be good. I'm fascinated, so we might be here a while. (laughs) Oh, 